I don't think there's ever been a better time to get back into Doom like right now. If you guys haven't heard by now, I, I don't know how. You're doing something wrong if I'm the one breaking news to you. But Horde Mode got an official release date. That being October 26th, which is next Tuesday. That update, update 6.66, not only comes with Horde Mode, but Battle Mode 2.0. Two brand new master levels, one of them being World Sphere, the first level from the Ancient Gods Part 2 DLC, and the other being Mars Core. All this stuff being 100% free, so you don't need the Season Pass or the DLC to get these master levels or horde mode and i see people still ask this question yes if you're on console you will be getting horde mode this is an official one this is not a mod so if you're on playstation or xbox you're not going to be left out you will be able to confidently know what it's like to experience early onset arthritis in your hands and to almost die from a heat stroke from sweating so damn much you dehydrate yourself just like the pc players we're all equal again so two new master levels battle mode 2.0 horde mode and he will also mention that they touched up dlc 2 with him specifically saying DLC 2 got quite the update in combat. Everybody's going to want to play yeah. DLC 2 when it comes out. Yo, yes, we filled in the thin spots. We know that, you know, the, some of the spots got a little empty. Some of the arenas felt a little short. That has all been uh, fixed. Rec the, the problem has been adjusted. And uh, it's pretty it's pretty damn meaty at this point. So I think you guys should definitely check out DLC 2's update. Uh, you should be pleasantly surprised. So DLC 2 is also touched up, but what got me really excited was the one that came completely out of left field. With this update as well, if you are a console player or if you play on PC and you prefer to play with the controller, you will be able to bind specific weapons to specific buttons on your controller, allowing you to quick swap a little bit more efficiently. This is a screen Hugo shared, again on the live stream yesterday, showcasing a lot of horde mode, which I'll get more into in just a second. But as you can see at the bottom, it says unbind actions and it's the entire lineup of all your weapons and you can tie it to any specific buttons on your controller so again not quite mouse and keyboard support but I think this is a very nice compromise and with this edition coming out with all this extra content I think with just the experimentation alone with just the button layout should keep you busy for a couple extra days so that's everything coming out with update 6.66 this Tuesday on the surface but if you don't mind a little spoilers and what to expect more or less with horde mode then we're gonna get into that now if you don't want any of that ruin for yourself then by all means feel free to click off that's pretty much everything that was shared beyond them saying that they are going to have a major announcement this upcoming monday october 25th they said to keep a close eye on all of their socials uh twitter discord facebook instagram i don't know why you would get your doom news from fucking instagram but with all this content and this major announcement that they said this upcoming monday is going to have in store they mentioned this is all just the tip of the iceberg which people were guessing oh it's an announcement of a new game and what id software's moving on and next and all this major plans for what it's got in store for us beyond just doom but watching the horde mode gameplay and listening to them talk on everything that they seem so excited about to share if i had to guess it had nothing to do with another game but rather not a season pass but a roadmap of potentially more content to come to doom which again going crazy you heard ideas a death match or snap map i highly doubt it was either one of those things i think it's more support through horde mode and maybe even more master levels because with updates 6.66 will only have four brand new master levels total and watching horde mode gameplay it looks like while they have a solid foundation it can definitely be supported even longer by them throwing in more arenas getting more creative with the bonus rounds maybe even introducing community fan-made demons which a lot of people have done in the past it's got to be something that makes up for the lack of snap map snap map i think has kept doom 2016 alive for a long time and while eternal's gameplay is way more different way more engaging can definitely last much longer on its own the lack of support content will still in the long run make this game starve and have a lot of people have no choice but to move on but we'll just wait and see obviously let me know what you think what could this massive announcement potentially be but now let's get into horde mode so hugo showed a lot of gameplay from yesterday i will leave the entire stream link down in the description below a little heads up it's about a two hour long stream although he doesn't start playing until about the 45 minute mark and i'd recommend you go watch it so that way you can get a better idea of how this mode looks and how it plays and get a general idea of what the first mission is going to be like. But the general idea of Horde Mode is everything is randomized to an extent. Weapons are infinitely randomized, while demons are randomized to 
a point. Meaning, no run will ever be the same since, well, it does sound like if you play it enough, theoretically, you'll know what demons you're facing. It's just the way you deal with them will constantly change as the weapons are infinitely given to you in a random order. This puts you in situations where you really got to be creative and think on your feet, fighting demons with weapons that aren't exactly ideal. The mode also does consist of demons from the DLC, so you will be facing spirits, blood makers, cursed prowlers, armored barons, turrets. If you don't own the DLC and never experienced these chess pieces before, then there will be a quick tutorial that pops up to give you a basic rundown of the new demon, so you don't really have to worry about that. Now, when you first start this, there's a new 100% skippable cutscene, then from there, this screen pops up. There's three missions, which initially I thought it was just three and only these three and always in this order cultist base reclaimed earth and then the hole now i'm kind of wondering if there's more missions or even if these are the only three will they be given to you in different orders playing them the other way around or maybe reclaimed earth first and then the holt and then the cultist base and that being tossed around but obviously we'll just have to wait and see for that but as you can see there are three main arenas with smaller rounds in between each one and bonus rounds here up top now i'm going to explain exactly how this works so if you zoom in right here to the first arena as you'll notice there's two numbers and then a locked symbol that basically tells you there are two main waves in this plus a bonus wave in order to unlock that bonus wave you have to kill these high value targets that spawn in during the main waves and you'll know what round these high value targets spawn in because right here when hugo was playing you'll see this little demon symbol underneath the number that demon symbol tells you basically when those high value targets are going to spawn in there's also an audio cue from the hell priest letting you know that they're about to spawn in if you don't kill the high value targets in time they disappear then you won't get access to that final bonus wave but if you make it through all the waves in this round, at least the two main waves, then you make it to the second round, Blitz round, where you're locked in a very tight space and you have to kill a certain number of demons. Now everything you do in this game mode is all tied to your score. So in terms of killing those high value targets, you want to kill them faster because when they first spawn in, they're highlighted gold giving you higher multipliers. Over time, as Hugo puts it, everything in this mode degrades. So the slower you are killing all the high value targets, the lower the multiplier you're gonna get with the demons going from gold, silver, and I think the last one is bronze, and then they disappear if you don't kill all three of them fast enough. With the blitz round, while you're given a specific goal to reach, it's ideal to try and surpass that goal killing as many demons as you possibly can within a lot of time frame because that is obviously gonna put you higher in the leaderboards and give you a higher ultimate score. Now in this mode, it sounds like the ultimate ending is just like Ultra Nightmare. Death. Losing all of your lives. So if you don't kill all the demons and reach your goal, then it's fine. The game mode doesn't end. It's just going to give you one extra life and you continue on. If you pass it, however, or reach that goal, then you get thrown into the next bonus area where you... At least in what we've seen with Hugo, you get thrown into a coin room, you collect the coins to increase your score, and then you're given three extra lives rather than just one. And then you reach the second arena, and then it's the same thing. Number of main waves, high value targets. You gotta kill the high value targets to unlock the bonus waves, the bonus waves, and of course the high value targets themselves all increase your overall score. Then you reach the traversal round, which I gotta say, I really do like the look and sound of this. Just like with everything else, your time during this, so the faster you complete it, the higher your score. There's extra coins you can pick up for a higher score. There's little targets you gotta shoot to activate the jump pads. You gotta time fire poles and other poles spinning around that you can jump on. There's one ups out of the way. I'm not a huge fan of the traversal but I really like this the fact that you have all these things going on and you have to get to the other side as quickly as possible just adds a really nice twist and I'm sure in the second and third mission they only get that much more complicated but that's basically it the basic gist after every single arena you get a randomized weapon I kind of flew by that this is how it pops up on your screen kind of like a quick slot machine the weapon you get is completely maxed out it gives you both weapon mods so you can choose whichever one you feel more comfortable with using just looking at this HUD for this game mode you can see your score in the top right hand corner I already talked about the waves that are popping up and knowing when the high value targets are gonna pop up or at least during what wave you're gonna be facing them and then you can see your score every time you're killing demons fodder demons aren't worth anything by that I'm specifically mean the walking fodder demon that don't really do anything imps soldiers gargoyles are all worth 50 points and then it looked like all the heavy demons are worth a hundred at least that's what it looked like I kind of breezed over that the last thing I wanted to mention was the score what's with all this points well besides the leaderboards horde mode comes complete with a bunch of new challenges two new master collection skins one of them being the classic doom 2 marine which you can see right here 
and the other being a biker inspired master collection and it looks like you're going to be grinding for quite some time because completely maxing out the master collection it looked like you're going to need 1.2 million points there's some other skins and cosmetics tied to skill based and time based challenges whether if you can complete your best time or beating the first second third mission or even all the missions are nightmare because you can't play this on specific difficulties and the leaderboards will be tied to the specific difficulties that you decide to play on but that's pretty much a basic rundown of everything coming this upcoming tuesday uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section like i said i highly recommend you go check out that stream because hugo shows everything the first mission has to offer in cultist base he explains everything in depth he shows, of course, the full traversal room, coin room, gives tips and tricks for Blitz, all the arenas. But that's pretty much going to do it for me. Like always, if you guys haven't joined the Discord yet, link is down below. I'm sure plenty of people will have some extra tips and strategies for Horde mode once that comes out. You can, of course, yell at me directly there. But until next time, see y'all later.